Howdy, 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 howdy. What's up y'all? Welcome back. Today we're gonna be playing with new makeup. It's been a long time since I've done a video where I'm just dipping into a bunch of stuff I just got, right? And some of this stuff is first impressions because it's just been sent to me. I am still on the fence about which foundation I'm going to use today. I bought three. I bought the, Guerlain, the new Guerlain one, I bought the new Laura Mercier one, and I bought the new Gucci one. So, I don't know, I'll make some kind of game time decision when it comes. I went on my Instagram, but like super short notice and asked what we should talk about today. So I have no idea if I'll get like enough responses to even address it. But we're also going to be playing with some new stuff from Ciate. I'm not sure if I've ever used Ciate on my channel, maybe a long time ago, but they used to be sold at Sephora. They, you know, offered to send me some PR. So I've got like a primer from them and a quad, no, it's a nine pan. You know, all, all sorts of things. And the look today is going to be very spring forward, as as it were. <laughs> so it's gonna be this really lovely, you know, peachy coral and green kind of look on the eyes. And we're gonna lean into that on the skin as well. And I'm pretty sure all the foundations that I got are pretty high coverage. And thank God for that, because look at my skin. Oh my God. <laughs> but yeah, let's go ahead and jump in. We're actually going to remember to put on a primer today. <laughs> I'm like so famous for being like, I have a primer and then putting on my foundation and being like, oh crap. It's gotten all gloomy outside, but it is supposed to get warm today. And I was in the city yesterday, if you saw my Instagram, I had lunch with what became this kind of like, what would you call it if it was four of us? Because I'm an Aries, Ingrid is an Aquarius. Let's put on the freaking primer. Nicolette is a Virgo and Kelly is a Scorpio. So we had fire, air, earth, and water, like all, all of the elements there. It was, it was a cool thing that we noticed by accident, but like some of us had met each other before and some of us hadn't and it was just like a really, it was just a really fantastic afternoon. And like, they're like, you're surrounded by so many men in your life. Like you have a son, a husband and all your pets are all male. And I was like, that's why I'm word vomiting at you right now. It's because like, I don't talk to women very much. And I was just like so excited to be around women. So this is the Dewy Skin Vitamin C Glass Glow Primer from Ciate. I'm excited to try this. This is completely new to me. And I'm pretty sure all of these foundations are that like catch all bucket of natural finish, meaning that they're not naturally dewy on their own. And my skin could use, no scent, uh, it could use a little bit of hydration and a little bit of dew, so maybe this will balance it out. Ooh, hoo, 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 hoo. Ooh. it's like slippery to the point of being kind of slimy, and I'm into it. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah. It's like a slippery, serum-y, mmm. Oh, that feels great. It's like a little bit more viscous than the like illuminating primer from Thrive, but it's de it's definitely got a little bit of like an illuminating property to it. Ooh, and it's like tenacious on the skin. I'm like rubbing it in, but you can still feel this like bounciness. That's delightful. <laughs> That's really, really, really like wonderful. I love how that feels. Ooh, yes. So the shade matches on these foundations leave something to be desired. I might have to go back to Sephora and switch some stuff out. I'm gonna take another look at the shades online and see if there are better things that could be other options for me. So I got the Guerlain Terracotta Le Temps and I got it in 0N and I'm like shocked at how yellow it is. I should have probably gone for a cool tone. I got 1N2 Vanille from Laura Mercier in their new, I'm gonna take a deep breath, Real Flawless Weightless Perfecting Foundation. It's weightless, it's flawless, and it's perfecting. Does it exist? But yeah, this one's still a little bit yellow on me and I got the neutral shade. I picked up the Gucci Eternité Debuté in Fair 120N and this one, y'all, I think it's gonna be a better match. I think this is what we're gonna do today, but like, it's even a little bit olive. It's a little bit green. And that might just be because it has this like spring green kind of like dispenser on it. It's very disconcerting, but I shade, not shade matched this, but like I swatched it on my chest earlier and I was like, that's very green. And I'm wondering if like that's gonna be a good thing 
or a bad thing for me. Let's see. This has the fragrance. I like it. It's really nice. It says 24 hour wear breathable foundation. I had the older Gucci foundation and it, see, look at that. It's green. It really struck me as like way too matte. God, these are all the same freaking color. All three of these that I bought, all in like the light neutral, are all this light kind of yellow green color. Well, the other ones are more yellow. This one's definitely green. So freaking strange is that. I don't know. It's like too saturated of a green too. We'll see what we can do in terms of trying to bring that back down to earth with like concealer and stuff, but whoa. Whoa, we might have like a full hand of duds here in terms of shade matching. That is not good. <laughs> like as stoked as I get on a really good shade match, I get really, really annoyed by a bad one. And it's funny cause like, I felt like I had a good shade match in the old Gucci, even though I didn't love the formula. It was very mad on me. That's just like, I don't know. I guess it's doing okay. I just don't love when a formula is so different from my skin, a formula, a shade match is so different from my skin tone that I feel like I have to put more on in order to make sure that like my skin isn't showing through. And I guess people with like redness and stuff kind of always deal with that because you're not going to shade match to redness. You're going to shade match to your undertone, but that's heckin' green. <laughs> like, I'm not even sure it's like a color canceling kind of green for like red. It's like, it's just green. I didn't realize we were going to be like this far in the spring direction that we were just like literally gonna paint my face like the Wicked Witch of the West. Okay. Now I have been told that there's a chance I have extra cones in my eyes because I do kind of like see colors that people look at on camera and they're like, I have no idea what you're talking about. Like, how is that green? And like, this is like vividly glowing green to me. So everybody's got their kind of like hyper sensory things. And I think that color is one of mine because that is just like, yeah, that's wildly green. Ugh. Okay. <laughs> That's not an auspicious start. So I do really dig though, the way that like the finish of it is reacting to that primer. Primer, really, I mean, obviously since it's the first thing that goes on, it can really make or break the entire look and that finish is delectable. I like it. So I'm gonna use the Kosas concealer. I think we're gonna have to do some serious damage control here with the concealer so that this doesn't look like my face is kind of like <laughs> levitating off of my neck, like a floating head. I'll probably use, I'll use this and then I'll also use the Charlotte Tilbury because I have it in such a light shade. Where is shade? Right there. The Beautiful Skin Radiant Concealer. I have this in two and it's so light that it helps to make it so that my chin or my jawline will contrast less. But okay, here's, I know, if, if you don't see it, you don't see it, you know, and if you do, you do. But a really interesting thing to like note about like how this looks so green is that my neutral skin that kind of tends to lean a little bit yellow actually looks pink by comparison. And like if you desaturate red and you desaturate green, you end up with green, but then you end up with pink, like they're opposites. And so from a skin tone standpoint, green and pink are opposites. And so that's why it's like kind of making my neck glow pink. Let's see if we um got any, any questions. Y'all, my, <laughs> my, my voice is so funny. It's kind of coming and going, but I try and sing because I just, I am constantly either talking to myself or singing because I'm a menace. <laughs> and I found that like, I sound pretty terrible when I sing right now, but the one thing that I can sing along with is clap your hands, say yeah, because he sounds like this all the time. So I can like do all of those like hilarious, horrible, <laughs> atonal inflections. All right. <laughs> Two really good ones. The first one is advice for artists that aren't arting, but so they, uh, but so wish that they were. And the other one is tell me how to quit my job. <laughs> all right. So let's start with the artists. So advice for artists that aren't arting, but so wish they were. I think that the biggest leap for me, the biggest jumping off point that made a difference between me getting, I was in a cycle of buying art supplies and 
getting frustrated. I would just, you know, get a wave of inspiration and I would buy a bunch of art supplies and then I would try and create and I would hate what I made and I would get frustrated and then I would just like shove it all in a closet again. What made a big difference for me was taking uh, an online class because yes, I have an art degree, but obviously what I know or what I knew at the time was not working for what I wanted to be doing. That's better, that's better. With the concealer, it's still freaking green. It's still glowing green. Anyway, I took a class on Artify from, it just got advertised to me from a an artist named Celia Lees. She's just a Canadian abstract artist, abstract painter, and she's just lovely. I follow her on Instagram, and when I say lovely, I mean like lovely from an inspiration standpoint because she's very prolific. Like she's just constant, like she's a full-time artist, and she shows herself in the studio pretty much daily. She posts her stories. She's really transparent about when she's feeling a little bit stifled or you know having a difficult time getting inspired and she really like experiments a lot and I, I like that. I like that it's not like a production, you know, like when you think about pottery, like production pottery or production glassware or something. Like she's not sitting there just like, oh, this is my aesthetic and I'm just gonna regurgitate it ad nauseum. Like she's just out there frustrating herself on purpose. And I think that that's kind of what you're supposed to do as an artist. But I don't think that that should be the starting point because you'll just get frustrated and quit. And I did it over and over and over again. And so watching someone who knows what they're doing and they're doing what you want to be doing, right? That helps you to like lean. I'm just trying to try and find my, my contour here. It helps you lean on whichever side of your brain is, you know, more type A, more analytical. Like it's leaning on the analytical side of your brain and saying like, here's a method to follow. And like, you're just kind of going step by step. Like here's someone else's process. And what it does is it like alleviates a lot of the anxiety that can happen when you're looking at a blank freaking canvas. Blank canvases are terrifying because you're just like, oh, okay, I am in my head right now and I'm gonna mess this up. Like I'm going to make something that I hate. And like, I, you don't know what your process is yet. And of course, you know, even if you're not an artist, there's a proverbial blank, blank canvas, right? And I think that like the confidence to create and fail comes from knowing that you're not alone. And there's something very lonely about kind of, you know, taking that first step out into the unknown and making art because you're like, I suck. I suck, I suck, I suck. Everyone else is good and I suck. And like everybody knows a secret that I don't know. And over time you start to understand that like, no, every no one knows a secret. They just are better at tackling it for themselves. And you just kind of begin your journey. I think that a lot of us are a little bit too concentrated on solving it. We're like, well, what I need to do is establish a process because at least that was for me. Like that's why I didn't make art for such a long time was because everything else in my life was optimized and you know distilled down into a process. And so I was like, well, I just need to get a process process together. And like to some degree, yes, because I, I like need to know what tools I need in order to make the marks that I like seeing kind of thing. You know, you, you need to know what supplies you need. But other than that, it needs to be unsystematized. And so yeah, I think that like, it, oddly enough, you have to start from the standpoint of using someone else's method, because the beauty of copying someone else's art is that it will never look like a copy. You'll always have your signature in the proverbial brush strokes, and it'll always be like a new artist rendering that's through your eye, whether you meant to or not. And so th there's really no shame to me in starting there, in saying, I don't, I, I humble myself before the art gods. I don't know what I'm doing. I understand what these media do, but I have no idea where I want to place my first step like breaking through that by just taking like an online class or something like that, like Artify is amazing for that. So that's what I did. It was like $38 or something and it just got me off to the races. All right, so for blush, I am going to do this little combo that I've been doing and it's, you're gonna be able to guess what it is, but it's not the one that I used in the last, in the actual Surratt video, but I'm kind of still trying to get my head around all the Surratt stuff because that's not gonna be the last Surratt video that we do. But this is the Artistique Liquid Blush in Parfait. And this is the one that's got like a pink with a little bit of a gold shift in it. And then I use that as like a, you know, a sheer blush and then I put this on top. And this is the Pillow Talk Matte Beauty Blush Wand. We were like talking about how much we love this at lunch yesterday when we were in the city. So anyway, yeah, that's what I'm gonna do on my cheeks here. And we will talk about quitting your job. 
So I'm guessing that what you're actually asking is like, how do you get to a point where you can sustain yourself and not have to do the job that you're doing right now? Not like, you know, how do I write a letter to my boss and tell them I'm leaving? Although I could tell you that too, but I'm using the 112. This is like my favorite brush for this kind of product. Quitting my job was really like it was always the goal. I had this understanding that I that I just didn't belong there, you know? And I've said this a million times, I'll say it again. There is for every person, there is a, a company size that is the right size for their skill set and the right size for their personality where they're their most effective. Like for some people, it's like, okay, I need to work in a corporate environment where everything has methods that have already been documented because I need to be able to function inside of a system that is consistent. And like th that is a that is a type of employee. And like understanding that and being the kind of person who, you know, really likes that kind of structure and it brings you comfort, like that's a certain size of company that you're going to be most functional at. And if you're at a startup where everybody wears a bunch of hats, you're probably going to feel really overwhelmed. Whereas, you know, if you are the kind of person who is meant to grow companies from like startup to, you know, uh, their initial public offering or something, you are the kind of person who likes to be like nimble and scrappy and like, you know, no one really has a, a super firm hierarchy and you like to wear a lot of hats and you just kind of like to like, you know, problem solve and do what needs to be done. You're probably going to get bored by the time the actual IPO rolls around and you're going to need to move on to another company. And there's no shame in that. It's about kind of knowing you know, where you're your most effective and it's going to make you feel happier. Well, for me, and I know, I'm not sure exactly that you're asking like, you know, how, how to do it exactly as, you know, and become a YouTuber like me, you know, that's not, I'm just kind of speaking from my own experience because that's all I got. But for me, you know, that number was one. I was never particularly effective on teams. I've never been much of a joiner or a team player. In my now adulthood, I have finally opened myself up to having like really rich friendships because I've always been kind of a loner and like realizing that like being vulnerable to, you know, making friends, especially with other women, but just like really like holding space for other people, that has become a part of my life that is super valuable only recently. And I don't know if that would ever extend to a job. There are just too many moving parts. And so it's always been something where like my North Star was being self-reliant. Like I, I would never want to get to a place where like my business grew to become like a team of people who reported to an office that would completely defeat the purpose of what I was trying to do. And so if what you're trying to do is quit your job to become self-employed, what you gotta do, unfortunately, is side hustle for a while because, you know, we're all still having to pay rent and annoying things like that. And so I, I mean, when I started my channel, I've, I've said this a million times, but when I started my channel, like in any earnest, right? Like, you know, day one of 2018, I was working seven days a week. I was filming all weekend and editing in the mornings before work. My videos were scrappy. They were poorly edited. They were, you know, quantity over quality, just throwing things at the wall, seeing, seeing what I could get to work. And like, I don't necessarily recommend that, but that was how I learned. It's just kind of about figuring out how to reprioritize your energy in a way that makes room for what it is that you want to be your full-time gig to become, you know, increasingly your full-time gig basically and then you know you can kind of like I don't I don't want to get all woo-woo on y'all but you can kind of manif manifest that shit. like you can be like I'm willing to put my buns on the line and kind of risk it for the biscuit to do something that I haven't seen done before or something that I've never known before as like my reality like being self-employed by making videos on the internet like I know I'd seen other people do it but I'm I was very like we're just seeing if this is gonna, if this is gonna fly at all, you know? When you kind of show the universe that you're willing to put your faith in your own efforts, you're willing to kind of like take a risk and like bet on yourself, it pays off. I swear to God, it pays off. It, and it'll do it fast. It's wild. It's actually incredible. So like that's, I would say that's my biggest advice if you're trying to kind of like turn a side hustle. It's not about, it's not about doing something in like this preordained like safe way. It's about kind of going out there and like taking a little bit of calculated risk here and there and then like increasing your confidence in taking those risks and betting on yourself over and over and over again.
you know, kind of just saying yes when the opportunities arise. I love, I love, I love those blushes together. Like, it's flawless, it's gorgeous. I love the way that the primer is behaving underneath everything. Like, this is the best my skin has looked in a minute. And that's kind of saying like something. But it's still green. It's definitely still green. I think I'm gonna have to go back to Sephora. Like, I rarely return things, but like, I wanna be able to give a good review. And it's hard to give a good review when like the shade matches are so bad. And the review might end up being the shade matches are bad. You know what I mean? Like, the shades are just bad. Because I remember we looked at the Laura Mercier in particular wow what a shame too because like what beautiful these are all in beautiful packaging but we looked at the shade range on trend mood when i was talking about like a will i buy it or whatever and i was like those are some of the most saturated pale neutrals i've ever seen like they looked like you know uh, pastel nail polish colors not foundation colors i can't say i'm like surprised but i'm like it's it is an unpleasant lack of surprise i guess <laughs> so we're gonna go in on my eyes now and I'm actually gonna start with the, the Hindash color fluid because we need to even out all this stuff. My eye is a lot better. My eye is like, things transpired. <laughs> okay, I'll just, I'll just leave it at that. Things transpired and I feel comfortable at least putting on makeup. I'm gonna go wash it off right afterwards. You know what I mean? I'm not gonna wear it all day. I think that the reason that it happened is a combination of like seasonal allergies and the fact that I was testing so many non-tubing mascaras because I am not used to taking cleanser and like scrubbing mascara out of my eyes. I'm used to tubing mascaras that just rinse off in beautiful, elegant little tubes and then that's it. And so I've never had any kind of sty or like, you know, infected tear duct or whatever it was. And so like, it just all came as kind of a surprise to me. I was just like, I, I literally, I went to the, I was like, what is this? I've never had this before, you know? Probably like, are you stupid? Like, <laughs> it's pretty evident what it is. So yeah, either way, it's like, I just kind of feel like I'm going to be now, <laughs> unfortunately, clinging to my tubing mascaras even more than usual. <laughs> because it's not just about not rubbing my eyes now, it's also about like, not getting, you know, gross, sty kind of stuff. So I'll let that chill for a second. Oh, also I got stuff from Hourglass. Speaking of tubing mascaras, they sent me a new tube of their Unlocked Mascara, which is like one of my favorite tubing mascaras. It's so much like the Thrive, but a lot of people like it better because it doesn't build quite as quickly. So it gives you a little more time and it's a little bit more like fluttery looking. It's not quite as like, you know, hunky chunky volumizing. It doesn't come in a brown. And that's why I keep going back to Thrive, obviously, but I'm gonna use it today. And I'm gonna use some of this. So this is, cause we haven't done, do we do, we didn't do like a bronzer proper, did we? So this is this ambient lighting palette that they sent. I've never had an ambient lighting palette before. I've had the blush palette, but I've never, I've never done this. And I've, I've had individual bronzers. So this is dim light, incandescent light, and radiant light. And like, TBH, you squint and you're like, those all look the same, right? But it's like, this is really golden. This is more of a bronzer. And this is this beautiful kind of like illuminating setting powder kind of. So I'm gonna grab Rattly Natalie here and do a little, do a little bit of like a incandescent light moment right underneath my eyes while the Hindash color fluid sets. Do a little bit of that. It's gonna give me just this beautiful luminosity. I'm still probably gonna go in with something mattifying at the end, but this kind of saves me from everything getting too mattified. And then I'll take a little bit of this one, which is just the softest, most beautiful looking like bronzer for a pale complexion. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous how pale it is, but how like effective Cause you know, I am trying to ring in spring, but I am so pale. I am like see-through right now. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but like I can't use things that are, like the things that I would normally use when I have like a little bit of sun are wildly contrasty on me right now. Like noticeably different, so. Look at that though, ah! Oh, 
See, I had never experienced this and so I was always like, yeah, I'm not gonna buy that because Hourglass is so stingy about supplying this for deeper skin tones. I'm not gonna like, you know, give that my endorsement. And so I know that they have done a better job. It took them a while, but they, you know, formulated more shades for deeper skin tones to be able to wear this. And like, what didn't occur to me at the time was like, oh, it's not just because, you know, all skin tones deserve to be able to wear products, but like, it was more about the fact that like, everyone raves about this specific formula and the fact that there was like an entire swath of the world that like couldn't experience that. It's, it seems silly because you're just like, okay, I'm speaking highly of this formula from a brand that like, I didn't really want to support for a long time in that sense. But it's like, okay, but the reason that we wanted to put so much pressure on them is because everyone does need to experience this because it's really special. So. And it's a little bit cool toned, so it's kind of helping out a, a little, a little bit with the green of it all. Maybe I have like, ooh, you know what I'll use? I might pull out the Rare Beauty powder because it's pink. So it might kind of help balance out the green if I set, set this with pink powder. Color theory, y'all. Let's go in with this here eyeshadow nine pan, little palette, guys. So this is really, really interesting. These shades are, are fascinating. I have always had an affinity for the combination of pink and green together in an eyeshadow look because I just think that they're kind of an underappreciated duo, right? Of like opposites. So when I made, I'll show you. So when I made my own combinations of custom palettes with the Lisa Eldridge shadows, I ended up with, this one is Artemis and this one is Calypso. And they're both pulling the pinks and the greens out of other palettes and combining them because that's oddly like kind of intuitive to me. So I think we're looking at something a little bit more in the value of Calypso here with this one. And so that's kind of the vibe that we're gonna be going for. Now these shadows actually pleasantly surprised me because they're really, they're really like beautifully pigmented. I think that for people who love uh, an indie shadow, because of the saturation of pigment, but don't always want to wear something that's every texture under the sun. This is a really happy medium. It's just a really high quality set of formulas. And it's gonna like show up on a lot of people. Like I have a little bit of trouble, you know, sometimes controlling it because it is a little bit more pigmented. I'm gonna grab a fluffy brush here and we're gonna just start in with this middle shade because it's just, you see that and it looks like it's just gonna be this like neutral kind of pink, right? You put it on my skin, it's gonna go like bright peach. It's beautiful. I mean, it'll be muted, but like, you know, it's just a really, really good color on me. What does Aries season mean for everyone since Pisces was a show, LOL. Okay, so there have been a few people in my life who are Pisces who are just like, I don't understand why you hate Pisces season so much. And it's just like, it's my actual literal opposite. It's just such a meditative, uh, I'm trying to avoid saying indecisive kind of energy. And look at that color. Look at it, it like goes on brown and then it kind of starts to shift a little bit like pinky peach. It's so pretty. And that's like the mid shade. That's not even the deepest shade. So Pisces season was just, we were really in our feels. And it's just, it's not just about where the sun is. I really recommend following Channy Nicholas on social media. I have her app, I have her book. She's just fantastic, okay? Like she's this lovely queer, inspirational, brilliant, you know, she's, she takes astrology like, and it applies it not just to the personal, but also to the collective. She has this really incredibly on the nose, but very elegant way of speaking about social issues. And I just love that she is constantly like aware. Like she just always has this very intersectional approach to her astrological readings. It just really sets her apart. And so, I have been paying attention to her and also Sarah Verba, who is one of my favorite intuitives on YouTube. I've been following her for years and years and she is just the, I mean, I can just tell she's the most lovely human. You know what I mean? Like she's just a wonderful, wonderful person. I just love both of their approaches to astrology because it's all very like kind, you know? Either way, Aries season is a time that, you know, can ruffle people because it's very like, 
Raise it, go. You've been sitting on the starting line and it is the new year of the Zodiac and so I'm baby new year, you know? Any Aries, we're, we're, we're baby new year. We're like, we're the fool card and the tarot. We're just like, mom, I am the person who jumps off the bridge. You know, if all your friends jumped off a bridge, would you run off a bridge? Like, I'm the friend who jumped off the bridge. There's something so Mm, like invigorating about an Aries being an Aries season because we're like, yes, everything's falling into place. Everything that I've been manifesting is happening and I'm just gonna take advantage of it. It's like you can really like sink your teeth into everything, but it can be really freaky for people who are indecisive or like kind of a more meditative energy. Like it can be really, really overwhelming. The fire is very apparent. I will say Aries season, at least in our hemisphere, in the, I would say our hemisphere because uh, I'm terrible at knowing the hemispheres. I think I'm talking about the Northern Hemisphere. So in the Northern Hemisphere, it is, you know, it's it's the, the spring of spring. It's it's done springing. It's just like, oh my God, the birds are singing. The flowers are starting to bloom. Like it's just, it's all happening, you know? And you just can't help but feel kind of Twitter-pated about everything, especially after the lull of Pisces. I love the Pisces in my life and I am surrounded by them. I truly feel like life sends me Pisces to slow me down. Whereas they send me Virgos to, <sighs> honor my chaos. But uh, yeah, I really feel like, you know, life sends me a lot of Pisces energy to, to slow me down. And I do have a lot of Pisces in my chart also. My Venus and my Mercury are in Pisces. So, you know, it's not completely alien to me, but I'm just, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. And like I said, it's not just about the sun, right? Saturn entered Pisces. Okay, Saturn entered Pisces on March 7th. Then we have Pluto entering Aquarius on the, today, on the 23rd. This is wild. It's, a, it's technically a, like a retrograde, so it's actually only gonna be here for, sorry, no, the next one's a retrograde. It's moving and then it's gonna move back and then it's gonna move back in. So it's three months of being in Aquarius, but we're getting this taste of this like surge of the collective, right? Because Aquarius represents the, the, the collective, the everybody, whereas it was in Capricorn and it went there in 2008 and like, you know, triggered the financial collapse. So the 25th, Mars enters Cancer. My ruler enters my rising sign, which is gonna be really interesting. So yeah, the Chani app is really great for knowing all those kind of key dates to, to refer back to. And basically the astrology of this week is absolutely incredible. Like go listen to the, the Chani, like the podcast. She's just so lovely. It's on, it's on YouTube, like her, her YouTube channel. Like she, you know, films herself doing the podcast and her messaging is so useful. And it is like, to answer your question, Aries season is just all about action. It's just all about, you know, things finally coming to a head, so to speak. Like, the, I mean, think about it. We're freaking almost four months. No, we're almost like a, a, a quarter of the way through the year. And it's felt like everything has just been like dragging. And so now it's like things are moving. Finally. Okay. So all I did like while I was chatting about that was just kind of build a little, I don't know, what would you call it? Like a default foundation for like a shadow and light situation. I just used the three mats. Well, those three mats. I'm gonna use the, it's like a red uh, mat here. I'm gonna pull that onto the lid. This is when things are gonna get very springtime. We're gonna go into like these, this kind of like pinky coral mood. But yeah, things are definitely happening in my life. Things are definitely transpiring in my life. And I'm definitely feeling that pull of the collective, which is just so cool because like I said, I've always been a loner. I've always been really sure that I couldn't trust anybody. And I am being essentially like pushed off the edge in a lot of ways by the universe being like, there are people who care about you. There are people who are going to hold space for you. There are people who are going to ride or die for you. And like, all you have to do is be that for them too. And it's something that you can place your hands firmly on. And like, that's something that I've never had in my life. Like, I really feel like for most of my, you know, young, young life and young adult life, I have only had lessons from which I drew, you're the only person you can trust, you know? And that counting on other people is too much risk. And I've always existed in an environment that was very transactional in that sense. Like I'm not trying to blame my parents or something, but there was a, like kind of a greater understanding in, you know, a lot of the relationships in my life that like everything costs something in terms of like your, effort and your emotional equity. And so it was like, if someone did you a favor, 
it wasn't just a favor. You owed them something, you know? And they would come back to, you know, to, for you to pay the piper later. And it was this very kind of like guilt-oriented, passive-aggressive kind of thing. And like, I, just the same way that I am self-employed and I don't need punishment or the threat of punishment in order to be productive on my own behalf, I don't need the threat of punishment in order to do nice things for people and hold space for people and be a good friend. And I just feel like I had a really hard time. I mean, obviously I'm, you know, now entering my, my mid thirties, you know, I had a hard time even until recently disentangling those things and like allowing friendships to be something that was different from that transactional, like scorekeeping system, because that was what I was always kind of surrounded by. So what you find when you let go of that, when you start to give and receive freely, is that there is more to give and more to receive than you ever imagined. And it just keeps expanding. If we would just stop trying to micromanage everything all the time. And it's so freeing because my grandfather, who was a cancer, used to always say, if you want to make a friend, ask a favor. I was always like, okay, skip me on that one. You know what I mean? Miss me on that one. Like, I just, I, I can't humble myself like that and put myself at risk for, for that. Like, it's not worth it for me to have, quote unquote, like make a friend, you know, like friends aren't that great. Why, why would I want to, you know, make myself that vulnerable, vulnerable for someone? But I've been so fortunate to have these, especially women in my life, but also just people from my past, like, you know, some of my closest friends from college and stuff that have been like turning back up lately and just holding space for me. And I'm like, this is what life is made out of. This is like what it's for. And I don't know, I think it's gonna make me a stronger parent and a stronger, freaking happier person. And I, it's kind of funny because you look at those things in the context of like when they happen in your life and you think, oh, you know, am I late to the party? Am I like late to understanding this? And like, what have I missed out on? And it's like, it's all been, it's all been important. It's all been for a reason. You know what I mean? Everything that you've been doing has not, has never been a waste. It's all part of your story. And so I am, I'm just really optimistic right now. Look at this freaking softness that we're achieving with these shades. They're very, like the deeps are deep, you know? They're like really great and like consistent, I guess is the word, you know? Like when you place that brown down, it stays so true on the skin. It is a little grippy, but I'm also using the, the hint dash color fluid underneath it, which is gonna make things more grippy anyway. But I kind of want to go for like the placement look. You know, I don't want it to be like ultra, ultra, ultra blended together. Like I want you to be able to see that kind of glowing red for Aries season. But it's such a pretty rusty red, like a clay color. Not quite as orange as clay, but it's muted a little. It's just a, it's a really interesting color to have in a palette. And I like what it does on brown eyes. So by contrast, what we're gonna do here is take this funky little like marbled green color. It's like a yellow, green, gold, white, you know? It's like a funny color. But it has a really cool like chartreuse shift to it. And I'm gonna use that here. So that gives it this beautiful, oh, it's like a gold green, you know, chartreuse kind of thing. And then there are these like, you know, funkier shades here. And I love this one that kind of has a little bit of, it's like blue, green, but then when it spreads out, you see it does kind of have on the edges, look at the edges there, you see a little bit of a red as the base. And that's going to help like bridge those colors together, but also just add something kind of otherworldly. It's a little bit of fire. I feel like this palette is not half-baked in the sense of like, you know, somebody just being like, I don't know, throw some colors in there, call it what it is, whatever, because like these shades, every time I use one, it kind of makes me go, huh, I can think of five other ways that I would use that, you know? Like, cause they're just interesting. For a nine pan, it's just interesting. Like the choices that they made. These are some really, really cool like shifts in textures. And then I'm gonna take my, my finger on that same shade and just work it under here. We're getting something a little bit 
a little bit moody, you know what I mean? A little bit smoky eye, but like also, I don't know. I want it to still kind of have this like brightness to it. So I'm actually gonna use a little bit more of that chartreuse and like really build, especially like right on the lash line, build that pop. There we go. I, I love that. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love how that that green shifts in the light like it, it at some point parts at some points you don't see it at all and then when it shifts it's like oh ooh, ooh what's that <laughs> i'm gonna pull the rare beauty powder and see if our color experiment works this is not saying you need to go and buy a pink powder in case your foundation is too green this is more of just like a, again like a thought experiment color theory thought experiment i don't know I don't know if this can be saved. <laughs> it's so green. <laughs> so Hourglass did also send me a bunch of new shades in their little balmy gloss, glossy balm, whatever it's called. Holy crap, y'all. I experienced that for the first time in that Instant Holy Grails video because they had included one in that box and I reached out to them and I was like, I wanna try as many as you're willing to send because they're so great. They're so great. They make your lips look so sexy. So real quick, I'm gonna zoom through my brows and my mascara and everything. So I'm gonna do my blade line from Make on my, my eyebrows. Probably the authored brow gel and some, you know, some clear like Kamiko or something on top of that. I'm going to use the Surratt Smoky Eye Baton for my eyeliner because I am just, I, the word is obsessed. I'm obsessed with it. Like I can't stop talking about it. And then I'll use the Hourglass Unlocked Mascara so you all get to see that. It's really growing on me. That mascara is obviously brand new, so I had to do quite a few coats, but it, as it matures in the tube, it's just absolutely unbelievable. I hate that my face doesn't match my neck right now. That's really, really bugging me. <laughs> like, ah, I hate it. I have to dry clean this dress anyway, so I think I'll probably just like bronze my neck. <sighs> That's very annoying. I get very, very annoyed at bad shade matches. And like, I, I ordered the light neutral shade and they're all so not neutral. This is a, new, a newer shade. This is Mist in the Hourglass Glossy Balm thing. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. It's just this like perfect kind of apricot -y pink. <gasps> oh, look at that peach color. Get freaking real. It's plumping, which is huge for me. Hourglass does some of the most beautiful plumping formulas. Their Unreal Gloss is ugh, still one of my favorites. I'm telling you, this is a, like, once it actually kicks in, it is a, it is a sexy plumping effect. Ooh, there it goes. It's a minty plump, not like a spicy plump. That's my preference, personally. Oh, y'all know we need more blush. And luckily, right here, <laughs> I have the House Labs blush in pomelo peach to just keep the peach vibe going because I can't be stopped. I love peach for spring. I love it. I love it. I love it. And the 
eye look really comes together with just a little bit more of that, so. <laughs> Were all the layers of other blush worth it if I just covered up with this? Yes, you know what? They're supporting actors. All right, let's do a little bit up. Every freaking time, stop shaking it, Kathy. You're so stupid. The top is broken. I just need to get a new one. Mac Fix Plus Magic Radiance. Make everything nice and glossy. And I'm gonna use something to do something down here. And it needs to be a slightly green bronzer. Oh, that's a vibe. That could work. Cause this one is actually a little bit green. This is the Charlotte Tilbury one. Let's try that. That did something. <laughs> if only to turn my neck red from just <laughs> excoriation. You know what? I call that damage control. Okay, I think we did all right. Let's do a quick run through of my thoughts here. These are, if you're new to my channel, all going to be kind of followed up on in a future kind of speed reviews video where I'll give you my final thoughts, but like these are very preliminary impressions. I will say that the Gucci foundation, um, I'm liking the look of it, but oh my God. The color is just so frustrating. It's so, so, so olive. So if you're an olive, a fair olive, it could work for you, but I do think it's a pretty saturated fair olive still. I wanna say I'll continue playing with this, but like, I really think I just need to go to Sephora and like switch some stuff out because all three of these are like poor shade matches. I think, I think when we did that with the bronzer, it made a difference. It'll at least look like acceptable in the thumbnail, not like my head is floating. The blushes, I mean, y'all already knew. My love is growing so quickly, not just for the Surratt blush, but also for this combo. And I also love the combo of the peach ones too. So cantaloupe from Surratt and the peach pop from Charlotte Tilbury, like they just go together okay. And like this also went together really nicely. I do, I used to like try and go for variety when I was buying my blushes. I was like, well, I, you know, I don't want to buy the same color in every one. And what I end up doing now is going for a pink one and a peach one, like every single time, because I just know that like that's how I think that's how I'm going to want to do my makeup. So the little eyeshadow palette, this thing is awesome. Like it's just very different and different for a reason. And again, it kind of reminds me of something that I created with my own kind of, you know, brain resources with the Lisa Eldridge shadows. And I love what these colors do on my skin tone and on brown eyes. It pulls the gold out of my eyes. It just looks really at home, but it's not it's not in any way basic. Like this is such an interesting, completely non-basic palette that looks so at home on my skin tone that I love it. And by the way, this one is, it's just called the Olive Nine Piece Eyeshadow Palette from Ciate. I dig the crap out of this. I've been using just the neutrals and then going over it, my lashes are all clumped together. I've been using just the neutrals, just the mattes and going over it with other stuff too. Like it's functioning very much as like a basics palette for me to like start an eye look with. And I just love that like, I feel like the nine pans were used really, really well in this one. You know, it's been a long time since I've been impressed with like a little nine pan, but it's also the first time that I've tried their eyeshadow formula and I like it a lot. I'm very impressed by it. Like it's really tenacious. It lasts all day and the color stays really true. The ambient lighting palette, I'm telling y'all, I mean, I, I get it now, you know, now that I've gotten to try this, like I really get it. This is just such an unassuming looking thing because you're like, they're pretty much all the same. There's a reason people pan the heck out of these and it's just because they're, you can always just kind of keep putting on more. It's kind of like a Pat McGrath blush where you're just, you just like get carried away. You're like, it just keeps getting better. So loving that, really, really into that like quote unquote bronzer shade because it has no business, call, it doesn't call itself a bronzer, but that's how it kind of behaves on my super pale skin right now. And it's so flattering. And the primer, which I'm not going in order here, the, ooh, I'll be, I'll be using this again. This is the Dewy Skin Vitamin C Glass Glow Primer from Ciate. Yes, yes, glass glow. Like I am here for it. I loved the way it felt when it went on. I loved how tenacious it was in, you know, the rest of my makeup look. I could feel how it was helping my skin stay more hydrated and glowy. And truth be told, this is the best my skin has looked in a while. Okay. Like just with the combination of this and then the Mac magic radiance, like it's just, thank God, you know, I'm starting to look like I'm alive again. So fantastic. I'm really all about anything that like plumps anything right now. And 
I would say that that dewy primer really like helped to plump. I, I think that this is just fantastic. And then as speaking of plumping, the lip color, mm, mm, you'll be seeing a lot more of these on my channel. The whole shade range of these Hourglass lip balmy, glob, glossy balm things are in these really gorgeous neutrals. You know, they're all in like pretty skin native wearable kinds of colors that, you know, go on sheerly. And I'm just very, very impressed by them. And if you like a really gentle kind of minty plump, I mean, does it get any sexier than that? It's just a sexy lip color, isn't it? Oh, I just love it. Mm. In fact, that's actually before I got on camera, I did this makeup look before, you know, to test it out. And I started with this, like I did my complexion, and I started with the lip and I kind of constructed everything else around it because I wanted this kind of juicy peach to be the star or at least like the jumping off point. And I think that we achieved that. So yeah, I just, these are really lovely and you don't need like more than one of them. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's not like, oh, you're gonna, uh, you know, not get the full experience if you go for a different shade. I just think they're all really wearable and really beautiful. The Hourglass Unlocked Mascara is not new to me at all, but it's still one of my favorites and I'm really glad to have it, to have it back. It's, I just love the look that it gives my lashes. Again, it's very much an effective tubing formula. Like it really washes off in very satisfying tubes and it's an extremely similar, like almost ingredient for ingredient uh, formula to the Thrive, but it is going to give you a more like fluttered look, at least initially. I think as it matures in the tube, they become really, really similar, but uh, I do really like it. And I know a lot of people find it easier to control than the Thrive. The Smoky Eye Baton, I've said it once, I'll say it again, you'll pry this from my colded hands. I don't understand how they did it. They made a an eyeliner that is idiot proof. I love it so much. I hope y'all enjoyed this. I hope this was fun for y'all. It was fun for me. It's nice sometimes to just sit down and like play, you know? So I'm, I'm glad that y'all are down for that. And if you did enjoy it, please do give it a thumbs up. I'll put a video right here that I think you'll enjoy. Subscribe if you haven't already. I love y'all and I will hopefully see you in the next one. Bye.